Hey guys, what's up? We are here with, um, this. <laughs> How to snooker. Now, this should have some music to it. I, I suppose not. Oh wait, you can hear it. You can hear it. Okay, so we are here with How to Snooker. Um, this game is a game made by, you can see in the background, Nerd Cubed here. Um, now, I am playing this game as kind of a video response, I suppose, if you could say that. Oh, it's controls. Um, left click, standard shot, right click, power shot, middle click, weak shot, middle scroll, teeny shot. Um, with a uh, non-capitalized S. Um, he did point that in, out in his video. Uh, so, yeah. <laughs> so, um, let's see, let's go to info. No, uh, I think it's if we press C yeah, twice. So this is a game about snooker, kind of. Um, so I kind of wanted to, let's see if I can not fail, that would be nice. Um, I kind of wanted to, oh fuck, of course. All right, well this is gonna take me a while to kind of like try and not fail on the first shot. So I, I wanted to play this as a, uh, give me a minute. I wanted to play this as a, uh, um, as a game developer, right? So myself, I am a game developer. Uh, not a whole lot of people know this, but um, you know, if you do, there you go. Uh, so I wanted to play this as a game developer and I wanted to kind of give tips and hints. So if any of you remember my last series that was um, Egg Does Flash, it was kind of just uh, my point of view as a player and this one specifically is my point of view as a developer and and also as a player. But um, yeah, I just kind of wanted to give like a, just a kind of hints and, and tips and things as far as um, the actual games go because uh, I like to kind of, I, I frequent forums and I, I like to, if someone creates a game, I like to tell them what they did wrong early before they make more mistakes. So. Um, the first thing I noticed uh, is when I first downloaded it that the um, that the exe the icon there needs to be changed. It looks really generic, and yeah. Um, now another thing I noticed is that in the um, in the top left of the window because this runs in a window, and I can't change that. But in the top left of the window. Um, the icon is completely missing, but in the taskbar you can see the icon is there, so it needs to kind of just be changed. Uh, it needs to be changed to a newer icon, and also, uh, also I'm horrible at this game by the way, um, it also uh, needs to uh, just be fixed basically. Don't follow, don't follow, you should be able to put some spin on that to not fo- oh wow. Um, yeah, that's something I'll mention in a second. Um, so, uh, another thing is, um, as far as the actual like files go, the assets of the game should be in a different folder from the EXE, um, just because it's much less confusing that way if you have like one single executable in the main like uh, root folder and everything else in its own like directory, uh, just to keep the confusion down. Um, a lot of people aren't aren't tech savvy or anything. They just kind of want to like double click something and go. So um, a lot of times it's confusing as to what they have to double click because there is like a uh, a package installer in there for the uh, C++ redistributable redistributables, I believe. If I could pronounce that word. Oh no, nope, I missed. Um, so yeah, just kind of keep it clean. Uh, Another thing is, um, this is really, really obviously a Game Maker game. Um, now don't get me wrong, I, I honestly, myself, I hate Game Maker just because it teaches really bad practices, and I'll uh, talk about uh, more of that in a minute. Um, oh, fuck. Um, but, <laughs> shit. Uh, but yeah, um, the actual, like, it, it, it's okay. Like, if you're not into programming, if you don't like to code, that is fine. Like, I, that, that's okay. <laughs> um, but yeah, if, if, if you want to actually get into serious game development, um, learn to code. It's going to be difficult, yes, um, but it is well worth it. And uh, myself, I, uh, I enjoy it. It's actually quite fun for me, so. Um, 
a- anyway, um, the another thing I, I would, did want to say, uh, did want to mention here is uh, the 60 FPS. Yes, there is 60 FPS here. That is fantastic. Yay! I love that. Thank you very much. I like 60 FPS games um, because yes, just just yes. Um, so yeah, that's it. <laughs> um, the entire menu, if you could tell at the beginning, if uh, if you remember seeing that at the beginning, um, the main menu was bound to keys. So, like if I press C here, I can go back to the controls. Um, that's indication of bad design. So yeah, um, it, it's just it, it's bad design. Um, you should have a menu like state. I'll talk about states in a minute, like uh, the technical actually like term state. Um, in a minute, but um, it should be like a, a state, a menu state, and then you have the game state, right? Um, but yeah, so I, I wanted to I wanted to kind of mention that just because yeah, um, it's really awkward just to kind of like press like M or something like that and find out that you have a main menu or C or I or something like yeah, it's just like yeah, yeah, that's yeah. <laughs> um, let's see. Oh, oh, wait, where'd my sound go? Hello? Sound? Oh, right. Um, M. There it is. <laughs> See, this is why that's confusing as shit. That is why. Because that happens. Because I pressed M and that muted everything. I forgot the control was uh, M. Um, just put that in the menu. Just have me press escape. Go to a menu with some options, right? And boom, I can set it myself. No like bound keys or anything like that, because that's just weird. Um, it died in 1990 for a good reason. Uh, so don't follow, don't follow, don't follow. There we go. Um, otherwise, um, there's no escape key usage. I, I talked about this in just a second ago, but um, there's no escape key usage. So when I press K- escape, nothing happens. I bind that to something. Put that into a menu. Like when you press escape, bring up like a menu in the side of the screen. That's that's perfect. That's amazing. Like that, that's absolutely fantastic if you could do that. Um, that's like the only key that needs to be bound to something all the time. Is escape brings up a menu like with options or like uh, just a pause menu or you know options to quit the game or to you know set music or you know you, you, you get you get the idea. So yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, the menu, uh, the menu text, if you, if you remember it, I'll bring it up here. Um, the menu text here, it's obtrusive and obstructive. Two O words. Um, yeah, it just looks bad. <laughs> obtrusive? Yes. That's a new word. I think that's, no, it's, that's not a new word. I, I, I didn't make it up. So it's, it's, it's just obstructive. Um, it's, it looks really bad. Like the font is bad. The font is really, really bad. Um, if you want to have big font, um, you usually go for something like Times New Roman, or uh, even just like just make a custom font, or just you know download a free custom font. Whatever, who cares? It's a it's a game maker game. Nobody will care. So, so yeah. Um, otherwise, there we go. Um, yeah, it just looks really bad. It's being posted over the like the game. That no, no, that looks bad. That's awful. Look, the ball looks like it's part of T, t so it kind of looks like an I, and it's just it's it's bad. Don't don't do that. Um, anyway, so yeah, uh, when you have a menu or something like that, when you have text over the screen, put it into a li- like a little box or something. I don't know, like a semi-transparent box, or at the very least, you know, just kind of make it look somewhat good. Um, uh, it, the, the Google link here, if you look at the info, um, it basically, it's kind of info on how to play. Uh, there was info on, I can't remember the key binding for that anymore. There was info on how to play and it's basically like, you know, if you don't know how to play, then, uh, Google. Um, okay. Yeah, that's fine. Whatever. Uh, you know, whatever, but, uh, make the Google link like a link just so you can click on it and it'll like bring it to let me Google that for you just for shits and giggles, just cause why not? Uh, that's just a little, like, I don't know. It doesn't matter. <laughs> it, it doesn't, it doesn't matter. Um, another thing you'll notice is the game is pretty freaking ugly. <laughs> like 
This is not a beautiful game, not by any stretch of the imagination. Also, I am failing miserably at it, but there you go. Um, I'll mention some of the reasons why in a minute. Um, but it's it's not it's not a good looking game by any stretch of the imagination. Um, it, the balls should be like have some anti-aliasing there. Like that's good. I like anti-aliasing. Anti-aliasing is good. Um, they should look more like balls. Um, also, another way to make them more look, look more like balls is to add some highlights to them, or you know, something like that, just to make them look more round than like circles. Just, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> another thing, another thing is the game is buggy as all hell. You saw that earlier when the ball appeared here; it knocked the balls into yeah. Okay, yeah, I get it. Um, first game kind of thing. Um, there are a lot more bugs in that. I can't remember like half of them. Um, but it, you, you know, it's like some of the bugs uh, Nerd actually left in there on purpose, and that's fine, just because they were interesting and fun. And that, that's completely fine, but there are some bugs in there that sh just shouldn't be. Like, yeah, just, just no. Um, Tried to do a little more QA before, um, before, like actually releasing the game. Uh, one way to do that is by um, a, a good a good way to do quick QA uh, is every time you create something new, um, or every time you uh, uh, do a bug fix or something like that, force the game to be in a state where it's easy to test. So say you have like a, a bug where. Um, it only happens if the ball is in this area. Force the ball to be in this area all the time just to kind of test it out and figure out what's going on. Like, force it. And then you can try it out from there. You know, make it easier on yourself. Don't... Yeah. And do that every time you add something new, just so you can test out all the features, make sure it works completely. But, um, yeah. So that's the thing. Um, there's only one single like bit of music which is really really disappointing and also gets really repetitive after a while oh no oh damn so it gets really repetitive um really quickly so yeah that's a thing um the the music and sound uh all the music and all the sounds i say all the music the one piece of music and all the sounds that are here oh damn it um it sounds really compressed, and so it sounds really bad. Uh, so, uh, fix that. Yeah, just, it's pretty easy. Don't use compressed sounds. Oh, seriously? Don't use compressed sounds. Done. Boom. Um, let's get this. Come on. There we go. Finally. Now let's spot the yellow one. So, yeah, don't use compressed sounds. Boom. Fixed. Um, it, it's a bigger download, yeah, but worth it it's like uh, yeah it's worth it this is gonna be difficult huh boom oh damn it <laughs> well oh well um <laughs> so it it needs more uh by say more i mean any um needs any video and audio options um a good way to do that uh, a good way that i figured out to do video options is um to make literally everything an option like I, I like to say, you know, if I if I f find myself hard coding a value in, I think, could I make this a valid like user option? And then usually I can, so I just put it in. Um, so yeah, that's the thing. Um, audio options, as far as audio options go, you don't need anything terribly fancy, but um, a music slider, a sound slider, like a sound effect slider, and a master volume slider are pretty much like the bare essentials there. So um, yeah, go with those. Uh, if that's if that's all you're going for, then uh, go you know go for the bare essentials because yeah. Oh, I was hoping that would work. Um, the uh, the shot slash mouse slash click system here is really fiddly like this is fiddly like the uh, left click for a normal shot the mouse wheel for god's sake for a tiny shot and a you know right click for a power that that's just like 
Um, in his video, he said he didn't want to use like a, a power slider, like you click and hold and it like power slides, that's fine. But um, what you could do instead, instead of that, um, is instead of using a click and hold power slider where it goes up, up and down and you have to wait for it, you use a click and drag system where the, um, say the pull cue could be in the indicator, right? And you, and you click and drag this way and the, and the pull cue goes like back. Uh, oh, uh, it moves back to indicate the amount of power that you're using, right? Yeah, that's a good system. That's a fantastic system. Um, I know a lot of mini golf uh, uses that system and it's, it's good. Like you can, you have more precise control and you don't have to wait for the power slider to go up and down and kind of like do a skill shot kind of. So yeah. Um, so that, that's a thing. Um, so that, yeah, <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Look, I fixed it for you. Um, please go on, please go on, please go on. Yes, nice. All right, let's get this guy in here. Boom, Ah. Okay, well, never mind. Um, uh, one thing that he mentioned was um, he had issues with um, the uh, mute um, being like if you if you muted it and then you restarted, then it would unmute itself. The way you fix that, yay! Okay, restart. The way you fix that is by um, not attaching your music, uh, the start and stop music, or sounds or anything to states. And what I mean by that, a state is, um, so in, in game design, a state is defined as a, um, a state of existence, basically. So think of it as a state of existence, right? Um, if you, hmm, uh, I'm trying to find a good analogy here. Ah, yeah. Uh, so it, say you have a, a normal game, right? Like a, um, an FPS, let's say. You have what's called a menu state, where the main menu is. Makes sense, right? So you have a main menu, and that is in its own state. And then say um, you hit the options button to change your options, the options menu is in a new state. So when you click the options button, you are switched to a new state. Um, and so when you're in the main menu state, you click the options button, and it switches you to the options state. Ah, game over, God damn it mention that in a minute um, so it switches you to the options state so if that makes any sense whatsoever I I hope I explained it well enough but um yeah so states are states of being like the game exists in different states of being it exists in the menu state in the sorry planes um, it exists in the menu state it exists in the game state the option state that you know whatever state you can think of if it exists in a new state, it is in, an, in a new state of being. So don't attach uh, music start and stop to a state. So what I mean by that is um, if you, uh, most people when they make their first game will, um, will have the music start as soon as, the, uh, as soon as the menu pops up. That's bad design. And the reason is because if you decide for some reason to go back to the menu at some point, then you're gonna either have problems with like the music stopping and starting, or you'll have it like uh, you'll have like new music on top of the old music, and it's just it's awful. Like it, it'll become very bad. The way you fix that is by having your music in an engine, right? So you have your music in an engine, in its own separate engine. Um, and you start and stop that engine. And the engine decides what music plays when. So there you go. That's how you fix that. So you start the engine at the beginning of the game. The engine decides what, play, what music plays when and what sounds play when. And you stop the engine at the end of the game. Done. Boom. So that's how you fix that. Um, Okay, so score system, the, the, you know, you lose screen that I saw, you saw pop up a million times. Yeah, it popped up a million more the first time I tried to play this. It was awful. Um, there's a reason that you don't, don't tie score systems in with win and lose states, right? I say state, what I mean is like, you know, a win and lose condition. Don't say if your score is negative one, then you lose, because that's bad design. 
Um, take Minecraft, for example. Minecraft has a score system, right? But if you hit a score of negative one in Minecraft, if that's even possible, you don't lose, right? You know, it, that doesn't make any sense. You don't lose if your score hits negative one in Minecraft. You lose if you run out of health and then you die. And then you lose, right? That's how that works. The a score system should not be tied into winning and lo oh come on, a score system should not be tied into winning and losing. That should not be a thing, and it's just it's just bad design. You could see how many times I lost there just at the very start, just like as soon as I hit the ball, I just lost. Boom, and. The reason for that is because I hit a score of negative one because I didn't hit the right ball or some other weird random thing happened and I hit a score of negative one and I lost because of that. So yeah, that's why it's bad design. It is absolutely infuriating, absolutely infuriating. Uh, just because you can't get past like a beginning part. If you don't know how to play the game, you can't get past like the, like, the beginning of it because you just instantly lose all the time and it's absolutely like infuriating i lost this game this game specifically i lost this like a million times when i tried to like first play it and even now i'm not actually sure what i'm supposed to do to gain that first point like i'm trying to hit the red balls i think but even now i'm just really confused as to what the hell i'm supposed to do to not lose instantly so yeah, that's just, that's really bad design. Um, it, it's just really tacky. Um, so, it, it's not quite as restrictive as Snooker is supposed to be, which is really nice. Uh, this game specifically is not, like, is not like your standard Snooker, which is really nice. I like that. Um, I like that he added some other things. He changed some rules around and things like that just to make it more fun. That's fantastic. I love that. Good job. Good freaking job. Like, yes, that's good. I like, yes. <laughs> just yes. Um, oh, wow. That was interesting. Uh, that should not have happened. Um, but I'll take it. I'll take it. Um, another thing is he made this game free and monetizable. So yay. That's awesome. Thank you very much. I love you. Ma, ma, ma. Um, that was that was my kissing mama mama sound. Yes. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. Um, uh, in the complaints department, back at, going back to the complaints department, we took a quick detour there. Um, the uh, the balls either are too small or the board is too big. It makes the games last way way too long. Look at how long this like this video is going to be very very long, and I've only got I'm only like halfway through the second game here. Either the board is too big or the, sm or the balls are too small. I understand that normal snooker is supposed to be like this, but if you were gonna bend the rules and break them anyway, uh, just to make it more fun, just do this. Yeah, just make the balls bigger or the board smaller or something, just to make the game shorter. Just because, yeah, it, it just lasts too long. Each game lasts too long. Um, take a tip from like Microsoft's old, oh, come on. Uh, take, a, take a tip from Microsoft's like old, um, uh, pinball games right the they, they didn't last very long at all you could play them in a couple minutes and you were done or you could last hours it was entirely up to you and say which one's the yellow one right yeah Oop, that little thing up there um so yeah just yeah <laughs> so another thing i wanted to mention was um to make the pots um these things here you know the holes make them bigger just because you know it would be more fun it's, it would be a little easier to make those shots and, and make it more fun. Um, that, that's just a little minor complaint. Um, when you drag the white ball around, I'll show you. I'll pop the white ball real quick. So you can actually drag this ball around. Um, so it, there was a few glitches with this, uh, more than a few. If there was a ball in here and you drag it, you know, if you, if you dragged it over to the, to the ball, then it would like hit the ball. So what you do to fix that um, is you completely disable the physics object on this, right? There's like, um, for each ball, there's a physics ob object attached to the ball, which interacts with the physics world. The physics world and the um, regular visual world you see here are two different worlds. Um, that's the way it works in, the, in a lot of physics engines. That's what I'm guessing is happening here. So disable the physics ball. 
All right, the visual ball can still be there, but disable the physics ball. Now, re-enable the physics ball when they release the mouse, but um, disable collision detection, right? So disable collision detection, disable the physics ball, disable everything, right? And then when they release the mouse, disable collision to detection, re-enable the physics ball, and then try and figure out whether this ball collides with this ball with some really basic like circle math. And if it does, move this ball out of the way. Boom, done. That works. And then re-enable the collision detection, of course. Um, so other than that, um, circle math is really, really easy. He was saying things like how he was like, um, had this like, uh, uh, this line here, right? This line, there was like a, uh, a bar and he extended the bar a little bit to be more round. Don't do that, right? If you're gonna make a circle, make a circle. Circles are easy to deal with. Like circle, circle collision is super, super, super easy. It's literally just like a, a little tiny, like, I think, um, uh, what, three value algorithm or something like that. It's really simple. Uh, you can look up online, it's, there's like, a, just Google it. <laughs> it's like a million, you'll get a, like a million results. It's fantastic. Um, so yeah, just basically just Google it um, because it is really, it is that easy. And if you um, cheat it, if you try to cheat it by like, you know, having weird geometry physics, um, you'll screw something up. <laughs> just don't cheat it. It. I know it. It seems easier to just kind of like drag shapes around, but it really isn't. Um, you'll have weird issues later. Um, oh fuck. Um, so yeah, circle circle collisions are really really easy. Don't cheat the system. Um, and even so, just general like math in general. Um, computers make math really easy all you have to do is come up with the algorithm and the math will the computer will do the math for you. the math will do the math for you the computer will do the math for you you just have to come up with the algorithm after a while you get really really good at that um, trust me I could do those in my sleep now um, I have a cat the cat is shaking its head there's a bell on the cat yes so so yeah um, yeah. So not letting the ball stop fully, if you notice that, I'll show you in a second. So you see how the ball doesn't quite stop and the pool cue gets to it before it fully stops rolling. You could saw, so you could see that there. So that can be a bit cheaty. Um, because I can hit the ball before it completely stops rolling. If you don't want to like make it cheaty, then all you have to do is um, you, you can put the pool cue there to like have the pool cue follow it still just so you can line up your next shot, which is really nice. That's a, that's a nice feature. I like that. Um, so do that, but don't allow the player to make the shot. That's, that's that fixed. Just don't allow the player to make the shot. Boom. Done. Um, and just, yeah, basically like have it stop fully before the player can actually make the shot. And that was actually pretty good. Uh, thank you, thank you. And boom. Yeah, that was in, that was in. And that one should be, uh, well, never mind. So yeah, um, just don't allow him to make the shot well, until it stops rolling is all, that's it. Um, now, yeah, put the, the main menu. Um, <laughs> so when you press R, it resets the game. And again, this is more issues with, the, um, with bugs and things that you had. Um, when you press R, it resets the game. Now, he was saying something about um, the menu being screwed up or something like that when you, re when you reset it. It's been a while since I've watched that video, but uh, uh, he said something about that. Now, the way you fix that is, um, you uh, put the menu in its own state, like like before, but you put that state visually above the game state. So say you have the game state here, put the menu state visually above the game state, if that makes any sense. So um, the menu state and the game state are still separate states, but what you can do is you can layer the states visually. You can visually layer them, right? 
So you can say the menu state come on. Oh, come on. Oh, there we go. Nice. So you can say like the menu, the main menu state. You can have that like visually layered above that. I I don't know how else to explain that. Um, like the actual like what people see can be on top of um, the other state that people see, and they can both be like interactive at the same time. There you go. I know it's really like that's that that bit's a little confusing. I know. Hopefully you understood. Hopefully. <laughs> um, so other than that, um, global variables are bad. He was talking a lot about uh, setting global variables and things. Global variables are bad. Don't do that. Um, <laughs> the keep everything um, related to an object in the object. Um, trust me on this. Just just trust me on this. Um, say for example, uh, say for example, you have a basic game. You have just a, a class. Um, uh, classes are um, in object-oriented programming. Classes are uh, basically an object, right? So you have like in, in object-oriented programming, uh, a class is an object. So what that means is um, literally everything is is some sort of thing. Um, so what I mean by this is, um, is say you have a object, a class called circle, right? Everything here is a circle, <laughs> if that makes any sense. So you have an object called circle and you have a whole bunch of objects called circle actually. So you have a class called circle that all of these are that class. All of these are that object. All of these are circles. So thus, you know, everything must be a circle, if that makes any sense. I know it's really confusing just because it's so straightforward. You expect programming to be like really, really difficult. In fact, it's really, it's so simple that it's confusing. <laughs> so you're just really confused by the simplicity of, of object-oriented programming. So. Everything here is a circle, so everything here must be a circle. It must be the circle class. There you go, done. <laughs> so, um, so what I mean by um, everything in its own class um, is, say you have a class called player. So the player must be a player. So, um, so you name the you name the class. Say you name the class player. So obviously you're going to be sticking player-related uh, things into that class. Say, um, say the player has a health variable, right? So you want to put that health variable in the player class or in the player object. Um, because the reason is because you don't want to make that a, a global variable because say, for example, you have a, um, a a enemy, right? Say you have an enemy class, so that's an enemy. So you have that, and oop, don't no. Um, so, so you have an enemy that affects the player's health, right? So the enemy damages. You have a function in the enemy called damage, right? Which damages the player x amount. And so if you had a global variable called health then you would have to set that global variable, right? So no big problem. You take the enemy class and you set the global player health to, um, I don't know, um, instead of 10, you set it to eight, right? Uh, you subtract it by two. Um, and now say so you add an item called a health potion that adds to health, right? So now you have a global variable health and um, you have an item called, uh, called a health potion that increases the health by two and you have a, a enemy um, that whenever ever it touches the player decreases the health by two well now you have a something called armor say you want to implement an armor system that reduces the amount of damage taken well now you have to go back and and uh, modify that yeah so instead of doing all of that <laughs> And eventually you'll have bugs in your system and you'll have to figure out which of your million and a half classes is accessing um, 
the health global health variable and which of them is actually causing the bug and it just causes so many problems and so many headaches don't use global variables they're bad so say now for example you have the uh, health variable in the player class and in the player class you have a uh, function called damage and so in the player class you also have a function called heal and so every time you want to heal the player you simply go into the player class call that function heal and it heals the player for x amount or say you want to damage the player it, you call the damage function and it damages the player for x amount now um say you want to add armor right so all you have to do is go into the player class into the function add the armor code and boom any anything that ever wants to damage the player now has to go through the armor done and all you had to do is change one thing so yeah don't use uh, global variables those are bad avoid them wherever you can because they will cause headaches and problems and bugs and just everything it's just bad um yeah avoid avoid where where possible um uh, the pockets here should be circles for collision detection because circle, again, um, computers are really, really, really good at math and computers are really, really, really good at uh, really basic math like uh, circle, circle collisions. Uh, if you have a more complicated geometry like a, uh, like a half circle here, then, ooh, excuse me, sorry. If you have more complicated geometry, like half circles and things, it can reduce the FPS by quite a lot because the computer has to kind of think. <laughs> uh, so just make everything circles. Um, it's easier, it's, it's just more accurate because the pockets are circles. So yeah, it just makes more sense. Um, you know, make everything as it should be, basically. Uh, because if you don't, then you'll have weird things happen, and that's not good. So, yeah. Um, the uh, collision detection, um, uh, in terms of that, um, so he said that basically he made these walls here. There was like invisible walls at the edge, and what would happen is if you shot the ball too fast, it would one frame of the ball would be here, and another frame of the ball would be over here, and it would bypass the wall completely. So what you do to fix that is instead of doing normal collision detection by, on a frame-by-frame -frame basis, what you do is you do something called raycast collision detection. And what that is is, sorry, I'm failing miserably here. <laughs> Just trying to get these balls in the, ah, this is so frustrating. So what you do is you do something called raycasting or raycast collision detection. Um, and what that is, is that's literally just a line. So say um, in frame one, the ball is here. And in frame two, the ball is here. Well, you have a solid wall that's right here. So um, what you do is in frame two, before you move the ball from point A to point B, you draw a line from point A to point B. And if the line intersects from point A to point B through this wall here, then you move it to the intersection and then that's it. So it, you don't have to make massively thick walls or anything like that. It's just a better collision detection for things that are moving fast. And computers are really, really good at drawing lines. So you can, you can find a line algorithm that's like really, really, really fast, quite simply just by Googling it. Um, and they'll probably just hand you code that you can copy and paste. I wouldn't recommend copying and pasting. I would recommend learning, but you know, if you're lazy, I suppose, I, I really, really don't recommend copy pasting code just because it causes headaches and problems later. But um, learn the code, learn it, learn how it works and then recreate it. That's what I do. Like if I, if I find something that I want if I find like a little like really basic thing, what I'll do is I'll look at the code and then I will copy it and uh, I'll do my own version of copy and paste, which is much slower. I will type it out myself and I will modify some things along the way just because I feel like it. And usually it still works. Um, oops. Usually it still works. Um, I just, you know, it, it, I learn along the way. So yay. So yeah, um, the uh, yeah instead of normal collision detection, use um, use raycasting. Um, 
the you should also have like infinite guides. I know um, a nerd cube said that he, uh, as far as this game is concerned, I think infinite guides would be would be fun. I know nerd cube said that he um, he didn't want infinite guides because it, wow, um, just because he just didn't want them, just because he uh, he thought it was it was more cheaty and that uh, it would be less fun. Actually, it's more fun. The reason is because. Or for me, anyway. You know, obviously, it's my opinion, but uh, for me, it's more fun. And the reason is because um, if you say, for example, um, this system here, right? This uh, just like this ball system. Um, you have like a a. You just have this system here. It's really hard to pull off like really cool trick shots with a, uh, a system that has like uses like prediction and infinite guides. Like say I um, like a, if I move the cue over here, it would have a guide from this ball to this ball, and then this ball would have a guide over here, and then the, then it would have a guide bouncing over here, and then it would hit this ball, and this ball would have a guide over here. Like it would show all the moves that would happen uh, when you make that shot with the specified amount of power, right? And so the guides would change dynamically depending on how much power you put behind it. Pulling off trick shots, like really, really cool ones, like say I bounce this ball off of this ball and then bounce back and bounced off this ball and then this ball bounced off this ball and then this ball went into this pocket, that is freaking cool. Like, that is cool. Um, I love doing that. And an infant guide would really help with that. Just, just make it cooler is all. Um, Again, you would have to basically do like shot prediction. Like you would have to like, basically every time someone changed the angle, you would have to rerun all your like collisions and then like not actually run the collisions, but like show if that makes sense. Basically you would, um, I'll show you the bug here. Boop, <laughs> lol, uh, lol, okay. Um, so <laughs> this supposed to move a little bit further than it did. Oh, interesting. Um, so yeah, uh, it, it would just be more fun is all. I like that. It's cool. I mean, if you want to do this, that's up to you. Um, I just really like like the infinite collision thing. Uh, the infinite. Yeah, you would basically have to like run the, run the algorithm or run the collision, whatever, and then not actually run it, if that makes sense. Just kind of like have, have a visual indicator of of what happens when you do run it. And then, yeah, I, I don't know how to explain that. I'll be entirely honest. Just infinite infinite guides, basically, which would be cool. Uh, I, I, would, I know how to implement that. I just like explaining that would be the monstrosity. Um, so I'm, like, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna just avoid that subject <laughs> now. Um, uh, another thing I did mention, I, I, I wanted to mention anyway, um, was uh, Nerd Keep said in his video um, that some of his bugs fix themselves. Um, bugs fixing themselves is an indication of, um, uh, is proof actually, not even an indication, is proof of bad design and bad code. It's not something to be celebrated. Um, I, I sound like a giant buzzkill right now, but um, bugs fixing themselves is not something you should be celebrating. It's in an indication of bad design and or bad code. Um, yeah. <laughs> so that's just not a good thing. You should know exactly what bug, what um, is causing the bug and exactly how to fix it at all times. In theory. In theory. It doesn't always happen, of course, you know, duh. But you should at least have an idea of how to fix the bug and the bug should not magically fix itself. Um, Cause that's bad. Cause it could come back later even worse. And yeah, you don't want that headache. It's just, yeah. Um, issues with, um, he said something about like, um, he was setting all these wind conditions, like he was setting them manually for bug testing and it still wasn't working. Um, it's because you used global variables. Uh, yeah, it's, it is, it is because, uh, global variables were being set and used. Um, that is why you don't do that. So, yeah. Um, something somewhere is being reset and 
it could be literally anything everywhere because everything has access to that global variable. So good luck. Um, yeah, have fun. Uh, so this is why you don't use global variables. Um, have fun finding that. Um, sticky walls. Um, he mentioned uh, the walls being sticky, and you could probably see a little bit evidence in that of that in the video. Um, you'll see like occasionally these the balls won't like bounce off. What they'll do is they'll stick to the walls and just kind of glide along them, even if they look like they're supposed to bounce off. Um, the reason for that uh, is because it, it's it's a side effect of bad collision detection. Just again, just use ray casting. Um, for your like the start yeah you could see that there it was supposed to kind of bounce off in this direction it just kind of slid along instead it's an indication of bad collision detection that's it just update your collision detection uh fix it that's all um let's see uh i have a notepad just on my other screen here on my other monitor just trying to like go through the list and figure out what i've already said here <laughs> yeah uh <laughs> yep because i can't remember everything um, oh, uh, don't check collisions every frame. Uh, I don't know if you're doing this or not, um, but if, if it is happening, don't do it. Um, what I mean by that is, um, is when I hit the ball, check for a uh, collision uh, along a straight line to the end of where the ball's gonna roll. So if I make a teeny shot, the ball's probably gonna roll down here. Check a collision from here to here as soon as I make the shot. If no collisions happen, don't worry about it. Now, if it does happen, say I make a, a normal shot from here, and the ball would usually roll like, I don't know, here I think, and before it stops, but it has a collision here. So check for that and say, oh, there's gonna be a collision here, right? Boom. And then as soon as this ball collides with this ball, check for a collision with this ball to, I don't know, over here. Say I hit this ball over here, check for a line over here, check for a collision over here. Don't check collisions every frame because that's just a waste of processing power. Just check collisions as soon as the ball gets hit and done. See, collision could have been checked right there. Again, not sure if that's actually happening in this game. Um, if it is, then it doesn't affect the performance at all. But if you really want to squeeze extra performance out of it, then check collisions only when collisions need to be checked. Every, checking them every frame is pointless because, well, it's just pointless. Um, yeah. <laughs> so um, another thing he mentioned was um, he renders the same object twice. Again, not sure if he's rendering like uh, the same pool cue twice, but if he is, then he's wasting texture resources. Um, so this pool cue is texture, as, as you can see. And he says he's rendering it uh, twice, uh, once for the pool cue and once for the shadow. And so if you are doing that, then you need to uh, remove the pool cue for the shadow, create a more basic pool cue that's just literally a, um, just literally a, a box, right? Just make it a box and turn it into a shadow. That's what you have to do. Don't render the same texture twice because that's wasting processing power, if that makes sense. And also wasting other resources as well, like RAM. Um, so, uh, yeah. Um, also, don't use hacky fixes, like um, uh, putting a physics object in twice. Uh, yeah, to fix a bug. Sorry, my phone's going nuts now because it's an old phone. And so I put it on the charger and now it's going absolutely insane because it's being disconnected and reconnected because it's an old phone. So, yay. Um, so don't use hacky fixes like putting the same physics object in twice to fix bugs. Um, that's an indication of bad programming and it'll only cause you more issues down the line. Um, it's a quick fix, it's hacky, and it will cause more problems in the future. Um, you just don't know about them yet. <laughs> I know it has already caused more problems. You just don't know about them yet. I know it seems weird, but that is what's happening. There are more problems um, that are being caused by having the same physics object being put in twice. You just can't see them yet. You'll find them eventually, but they'll be there. But uh, don't use hacky fixes to, to fix bugs. Um, actually fix it you know uh test your game often 
uh, if you make a game, test it often. Um, hard code situations in that new functions you made uh, use and te to just basically test them quickly. So say I made a, a function or uh, say I made a fix that uh, the ball was in here and I, I made a fix that it doesn't collide, uh, force the ball to always be in here just to make it quicker. Just uh, force situations to come into play to test new code or test bug fixes or just, you know, test things. Force the situations. Um, it does take more time to, to, um, to test literally everything, but it all but eliminates all of your bugs. Um, trust me, worth it in the long run. <laughs> very, very worth it in the long run. Um, it, one last thing I did want to mention, um, it, it isn't really a bug or a pet peeve or anything, uh, or just learning. Um, mental math gets a lot easier over time. Um, after a while, you'll be able to do mental math really, really, really quickly. Um, so it's just, it comes with the trade. It really does. Like the more you code, the more you'll find that, um, that you'll be doing a lot more mental math a lot easier um, in real life and in code. And like I said, it'll become easier over time. The entire thing will just be easier uh, as you go along. I just kind of wanted to mention these things now, just to um, just to make sure that that people are going on the right path. If they do decide to do uh, game design or game development, that uh, they go along the right path instead of doing like these uh, hacky fixes or other things, and then wind up um, confused and frustrated down the line. That's what's confusing and frustrating about programming, is. Uh, is when when people use these hacky fixes or like they try and do things that um, that that are just bad practice. There's a reason that it's bad practice, and you will become very very frustrated at programming, and you will want to quit, and it will just be bad. Um, so yeah, just follow the rules, kind of is what I'm saying. Follow the rules. Um, and that is actually my entire list done. Um, this was a really long video uh, ju of just me talking about programming and code and things. Uh, so it could be extremely boring. I hope it's not. Um, but I, I, it could be just extremely boring for people who just aren't interested. So I do apologize for that. Um, if, you were, if you were just not into game design or code or anything like that and just want to play games or watch me play games. Um, I apologize for that, but I, I did want to put this video out just for the benefit of the few out there who are um, into developing or making games. Uh, so yeah, that was, this was, that, that was kind of this video. Um, I, I do want to make kind of more videos like this, I just don't want to make them boring. So, I'm gonna have to figure out a, a way to make this a little bit better or easier or something. Um, or just more targeted toward, uh, toward people who are just, uh, who would like to make their own games, but, um, I don't know. I, I will release this video in a, in, in response, again, to NerdCube's, um, video on his game just to kind of uh, teach him or other people or anybody who's watching just kind of the flaws of this game and just kind of good practice and game design in general. And um, yeah, that should be about it. Uh, thank you very much for watching. Uh, again, I apologize for the long kind of boring video, but I um, did want to get this out. So please do remember to like, comment, and subscribe if I see more of that. I will, of course, do more of this. And as always, I'll see you next time.